What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the first episode of Eternal Winter, the .1 alpha version. This is going to be the first release that hits Steam, and it's a survival game, and so I know you're rolling your eyes already, and you're like, oh my god, another survival game. This one's going to be really short, because there's not a whole lot of stuff to show off. The game is basically a proof of concept right now. As I understand it, I talked with the developer a tiny bit through email. He's the only person developing this game, so it's a one-man project, and it takes place, it follows a scavenger survivor in a world which appears to have gone through some kind of like nuclear winter or something essentially you start out in the suburbs but all of the houses are up to the ceiling and snow and the only thing you have is a dog sled team you start out with just your wits and a dog sled team and I thought this was a very very fascinating concept because this taps into the notion that humans are social animals I'm willing to bet that all of us care very very much for our pets I've had I can't tell you how much I love my Australian Shepherd. I have cats that I care very much about. I've had dogs throughout my life that I cared a lot about. They were like my best friend when I was a little kid. Okay, maybe not my best friend. I had real life human friends too. But my dog, you know, it's always there for you. That's the nice thing about dogs is that dogs are very attuned to human emotion and things like that. Whereas cats are just like, meh. He fed me. I guess I'll purr for a little while. But I am a cat person. I like the fact this game gives you animals, though, that are under your control. You get to name them. You get to care for them. And in fact, I hope the developer focuses on that aspect of the game over the scavenging aspect of the game. I think this could be a very, very... There's a lot of scavenging games out there. There's a lot of survival games out there. But there are no games out there that are kind of like the sims with a dog team you know what i mean and so i think that that would be developing that is what's truly going to make this game unique so without further ado let's go ahead and start up a new game this game is a little bit strange in that if i run it on the highest settings i get 60 frames but if i run it on the lowest settings i get like five frames very very weird very very weird all right so we've got got to name our dogs so dog number one as you can see the textures aren't in the game essentially the developer has been doing this in his free time in between his real job and so he's putting it up on steam now to make this game his full-time job and he's gonna wait and see how well it does on early access and then he's going to plow forward with the money that he makes off of it. I think it's gonna be debuting at $7.99 the first week that it comes out and so it's definitely not that expensive. I think that that's about what I spend at my normal burrito stand that I go to. I mean it's because I like to get all the fixins with like guacamole and stuff. Alright so I Sometimes I mispronounce things on purpose. Just bear that in mind. I know I, I can see people already like freaking out with their eyes twitching wanting to like fix the way that I've said things. So the first dog will be Dingle. The second dog, Pingle. The third dog, Nickel Nabber. And then the fourth dog will be Dribble Chin. All right, and so we've got Dingle, Pingle, Nickel Dabber, and Dribble Chin. That would make for a very, very difficult sleigh riding song. I don't think that I could rhyme that all together, and I don't think I could get it fit inside the, the meter. Yeah, I think it would be bad. I think it would be bad. The bars would be very, very difficult to fill. You may also notice that there are no sound effects right now. That'll There will be in-game, but at the moment, I think the developer is kind of overwhelmed and working by himself, and so certain things just have not been implemented in the game just yet. Okay, so here we are in our house. You can get back to this help menu. I've played the game about an hour before this, so this is more or less a first impressions video. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and the main thing is don't lose track of your house. If you lose track of your house, oh my god, it is awful. So, the graphics are unfinished, the textures are primitive, everything in the game is essentially just a proof of concept right now to get people to vouch for the game. And with what he's got in place right now, the basic pieces of the game are there. You can shoot your dogs, by the way. I, I tested it. I didn't want to test it. I want to point that out right now. I didn't want to test it, but for the purpose of doing this video, I had to check. And so, I shot my dog with a crossbow. And yes, indeed, you can shoot your own dogs, which actually sort of leads to like this weird situation that I think he could develop on in the future. What if your dog ends up with an infection? What if this happens to one of your dogs? You know, there's a lot of ways that the developer could make you care about your dog team in this game. Give them personality. As of right now, they do have some feedback when you feed them or when you give them band-aids or anything like that. If you mouse over the dogs right here, you actually kind of want to... There's a special... There we go. There's like a special spot like above the dog that if you point at it, it'll give you other information information and so as far as I could tell the food meter is fairly obvious the red bar is his health and you can heal them with band-aids and med kits just like you can heal yourself my health is down at the bottom left my food meter is down at the bottom left and my water meter the blue is either stamina or water I'm not sure I haven't tested that yet and my hour of gameplay will test it during this episode more than likely but yeah we can sprint 
We can run around. We've got a flashlight that we can play strobe light games with. You can arbitrarily blind your dogs if you want. They all appear to be taking up the same position. This is our sled. It stores a little bit. Like, there's not a lot of storage in this game, which has been one of my main complaints so far, is that you pick up a lot more loot than you can actually store. And on your character, you have a weight allotment. And so when you run out of your weight allotment, essentially, you kind of just, like, stock up on stuff, and then you're just sort of stuck until you eat more food or something. You can only feed your dogs raw meat. And so onward, by pressing the E key, we can now go on a sleigh ride with our dogs. You can look around while you're in the sled. In fact, you can go backwards like this, like a bamf. You can, like, ride it backwards and just be like, ha ha, I'm going faster than you with a dog-powered sled. How do you feel about that right now? And people would be like, I feel terrible about that. So what we want to do, there's a deer off in the distance over there. But the first thing that we're going to want to do is we really, 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 really need to figure out where a gun is going to come from. And so the first thing that I think I'm going to scavenge for is going to be a firearm. I think that's going to be in our best interest, and I think we should probably head out that way. There are some performance issues in the game right now. Like I said, weird things happen. And so I more than likely won't render this at 60 frames because it kind of like pops in and out, and it's very, very noticeable if you render at 60 frames. So I apologize. The format is not quite there yet. Optimizations will come in the future, I assure you. This is basically just proving that, like, a game exists at this point. We don't want to get too far away from our house. I'm going to follow roads. And actually, I'm going to use roads almost exclusively to navigate. Because the few times that I've played this game and I've tried to ride off, like, wherever I wanted to go, it's gone very, very poorly for me. And I've ended up kind of, like, way out in the boonies, unable to find anything other than my dog sleds. And the dogs are sitting there looking kind of hungry. And I'm, like, the nearest thing that they can eat. And so, I watched the Les Stroud episode of Survivor Man where he had the dogs in his dog team. And they spent like half the episode just fighting with each other. So, I'm willing to bet that if I don't feed them, their loyalty will fade really, really fast. I don't know, dog sled teams seem to be a little bit more aggressive than your average dog. And I think they have to be in order to be kind of goaded into working like this. I do enjoy this game though, it's, in it's fun and kind of like a weird Christmassy way. I, don't, I feel like I'm going out to deliver presents to the girls and boys, but instead of presents, I'm going out to deliver bullets to all the evil things out in the darkness. I've never made it to nighttime before. I don't know what happens at nighttime. It's not that I've died. It's just that the day cycle of this game is really, really long. And so I think you save when you sleep. What is that? Hold on. Let me take a look at this. A very, very boxy bus. All right. Well, let's see if we can loot this. Can we go inside of it? Oh, we can. Let's turn on the flashlight here. So it looks like... Bandages. Okay, so we got some bandages. Oh, somebody set up a house inside of here. So we've actually got a second area. I have never found. I played for an hour and I looted dozens of buildings. And this is the first one I've ever seen that has another bed and another fire that you can cook by in it. It's also got, that looks like a magazine full of bullets. Okay. The game is not amazingly beautiful. It's kind of got like a Roblox, maybe like a, oh, I don't know like an unturned type of thing going for it. But that hasn't stopped anybody else from enjoying unturned, so I wouldn't let it stop you from enjoying this game either. The game is simple right now as it stands. Like I said, proof of concept. He's just trying to get people to back the game at this point so that he can finish it. He can essentially, I'm assuming anyways, that's what I would be aiming for if it was me. I'm assuming he's trying to get enough money off of the early access so that he can quit his job and work on the game full time as it stands right now because just about everything either has primitives or B has very, very light texturing at the moment. I do like how it uses solid colors, though, and I think they could actually sell that as an art form in the game. I thought I saw a building back over here. Yeah, there's an entire town over here. So let's be very, very careful. The only thing I found so far that's been dangerous are, like, these giant timber wolves, and they're, they're enormous. They're wolves that are, like, three times the size of your dogs, and they seem to be quite aggressive. They definitely seem to go after you or something. Maybe they didn't. Maybe I was just being jumpy, but it seemed that way. So the road that I want is right back there. I may, in fact, operate out of the van over there and then just use the house on the hill as a storage location. All right. Dribble Chin, you're in charge. Nickel Nabber, get out of the way. Dribble Chin, you're in charge. Well, maybe not Dribble Chin. Maybe eh, Pingle's looking a little bit distracted right now. He's got ADD or something. He's busy staring at the white earth. You know what? Nickel Nabber, you're in charge. I changed my mind. Nickel Nabber's in charge. Let's go back over here. See, yep, that's what I thought. The second I left, I knew Dribble Chin was just going to lay down and give up. He's not being vigilant right now. We've got some power cables right there. I can't tell if that's like a orthodox cross or if it's supposed to be an antenna. I'm pretty sure that since... Are they crooked like that on orthodox crosses? Like, I know that from the front view on an orthodox cross, one bar is straight and the other bar is crooked, but are they crooked from this dimension too on the side? I think it might just be an antenna. Maybe I'm looking too far into it. We've got ourselves nothing in the back of this vehicle, actually. Not a damn thing. So we got skunked right there, unfortunately. You will get skunked in this game. If that bothers you, then 
This may not be the... Ooh, there's some arrows or something in there. All right, let's go look and see what we've got over here. It's another scavenging game, and it's another scavenging day. And so I'm going to do my best to work my way through here without getting killed up. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of things to kill you right now. I don't know if he's going to add, like, a supernatural element to the game, because very clearly, in the description of the game, he says that the area has been caught in an eternal winter. And so I'm not sure if this game's going to go in a supernatural direction, or how this is going to go, or if it's purely just going to be, like, a dog sled thing. But honestly, if they added the supernatural to it, dog sledding and the supernatural, that's a very, very interesting combination. My mind is racing already. Having, I used to be an English major. I was. And then I switched to geology, and I graduated with a degree in geology, but... I used to do, like, creative writing prompts and things, like, all day, every day. Oh, there's a soda in there. Hooray, I like soda. I drink, like, a million a day. All right. But anyways, as I was saying, I used to do creative writing prompts all the time, and I'm actually... My brain wanders when I start thinking about the possibilities of, like, an ice-locked mainland where all you have is your dogs. It kind of gives you that feeling of... Oh, I don't know. What was the name of that movie? Oh, God. It was the one with Aragorn in it, where he's walking around with a little kid. It'd be kind of like that, except with sled dogs, and you'd have people around that are troublesome. You would have, you know, animal... Did I already loot that over there? I looted some car over in this direct... I think I did. Your flashlight doesn't run out of batteries or anything, so don't worry about your illumination source, like, running away on you. You shall remain illuminated, I promise you. What is this? Ooh, another magazine full of bullets. Hell yeah, we don't have a gun, so I mean... I suppose we can, like, spit them at the enemy or, like, throw them at the enemy if we get really, really desperate. Put them in a slingshot, possibly. Find ourselves one of those wrist, ro wrist rockets. That was, like, the best toy you could ever get when I was a kid. It's not really a toy. It's actually quite dangerous. I mean, I immediately got into trouble with my wrist rocket. I, it took me about five minutes before I got myself into trouble with a wrist rocket, and I started just, like, damaging nature in irreparable ways. I was like, wait, you got me a weapon for Christmas? I'm like, oh, best parents ever. Actually, I think it might have been one of my uncles that got it for me. But anyways, I had one of those wrist rockets where it has, like, the wrist brace on it. And that's got, like, the super long elastic tubing that allows you to fire that thing at, like, a million miles an hour. Like, a, actually, don't you measure the velocity of projectiles and bolides in feet per second? I think that's how projectiles are measured, like, bullets and things. You measure it in feet per second. But anyways, it fired pretty rapidly. It took me about a week before I had killed my first bird with it. I felt kind of guilty. Okay, I felt really guilty as a kid. I didn't think it was going to kill him, but then it totally did. I mean, there's a lot of, like, pigeons around, but... I If you give a kid a weapon, he's gonna get himself into trouble. I think that's what it comes down to. Especially with a lack of supervision, which, at that point, there was none. Hold on, doggies. Turn a little bit better. Turn! I will it! Turn for me, doggies! There we go. And so, having turned our way around, let's have a look. I prefer to keep landmarks like still identifiable so this is the road that we followed from our house back on the hill it may be a good time for us to go back and we need to get raw meat for the dogs that's really our first objective and so I hadn't really talked about things we need to do but we need raw meat for the dogs and the problem with this hold on beep 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 there you go walk in unison guys dribble chin pick it up dribble chin pick it up I, I can tell you're lollygagging back there just let it come on man come on man I feed you every single day and you're just Alright, you guys are moonwalking, which I actually feel is pretty impressive. I feel like if the world wasn't locked in an apocalyptic haze of snow and ice, we probably could have made a career out of moonwalking dogs with a dog sled. If you can't make money off that, it becomes questionable whether you can make money off anything at all. It's... That's a pretty good leg up in the entertainment industry. A set of dogs that can all moonwalk while simultaneously pushing a sled. It's... That's, that's a pretty good act. That's a pretty good act. I'm not going to say that it's Penn and Teller, but... It's an axe, so there's nothing in the back of that car. I don't want to lose my landmarks for right now. Hmm. Let me store things on the sled, too. So put... I'm basically just going to keep medical supplies in here. And then also, I think I'll probably store magazines or anything that might be heavy, actually. I don't think mags are that heavy. We've got water, we've got that. We can't feed any of this to our dogs, so that's going to become problematic. You also can't stack things inside the storage area. I think the inventory system might just be like a primitive that's there to hold the place until the real system gets implemented. It's a simplistic system, but it works. I mean, it's not much to look at, but as long as it's functional. I mean, I've seen prettier UIs that work a lot worse. I'll leave it like that. I play a lot of games because technically YouTube is my job. It's what I do eight hours a day. And so I've seen a lot of games with barely functional UIs that can just like... You can't vouch for them whatsoever. Like, yeah, they're gorgeous, and they've got all kinds of artwork and everything else, but they don't work. At least here it's like one slot for one slot, and it seems to be okay. I'd like it if stacking was implemented, but I'm not going to weep and gnash my teeth and cry about it if it ain't. So our house is on that hill over there. Our bus is right over there. 
let's have another look around the opposite way. I'm going to try and keep us a little bit closer to the homestead right now so that in a pinch we can get back over there. But we've got to feed the dogs. Luckily, the dog's hunger doesn't go down that quickly. It's not like playing the long dark where the hunger is just like rapidly with a meteoric fall. Not even like I guess it would fall like a... Do meteors fall? I don't know. I'm not an astronomer. I don't know these things. I would say a comet will fall through our... Well, shooting stars. What are those? Are those little meteorites? I bet they are. The little meteorites. It's falling like a meteorite in long dark. I've heard that they fixed it recently, but honestly, I've been so busy with other stuff that I haven't had a chance to go back and take a look at it. Over here. So there's our house on the hill. That's us right there. And in fact, my sense of direction was a little bit off. In fact, I thought we were a lot closer to the van over there. So let's... Okay, so there's a deer that we can hunt right there. We just got to find ourselves a gun. The bullets in this game are a little bit weird. You guys will see what I mean once I get there. Hopefully we'll find a firearm by the end of this first episode. And if we don't, it'll be disappointing. But I just wanted to do a little tiny short series on Eternal Winter. I didn't want this to be like a full-time, like, hell yeah, let's do 35 episodes of it type thing. But maybe like five or six. Because there's not that much content implemented right there. Like, there's enough to play the game for three or four hours and have a pretty good time. But after that, you're going to be repeating a lot of the tasks that you've already done. Or resting repeatedly so that your supplies run out. The point of the game is if you look at your, hold on, inventory screen here. It does have a day counter right there. A primitive one. There's a day counter so that you can count how long you've been alive along with your dogs. I don't know if your dogs die, how that affects the game. I don't know if that's really anything that's been implemented just yet. I see a number of what look like maybe military barracks up here or something. I don't know. These are what all the old military barracks look like in Monterey. I actually went up in there. We hopped a fence. There's an abandoned military base up in Monterey, and we hopped a fence, and we started looking around in there. It was pretty fun. I probably shouldn't admit to that. That's probably a criminal offense or something, but oh well. Oh, there it is. Howdy doody. I don't know if the map is the same every single time. I know I found the gun in that same building last time, so it may be possible that the building's and the game are not randomly generated right now. I don't know if they ever will be or if it's just going to be a static map, much like the Long Dark. I think there are pros and cons to both. I think that when you take a survival game and you put it in a random map, the problem that you often run into is that you can get bad maps that just outright kill you, and it's just based on luck rather than your knowledge of the game or your ability to survive. On the opposite hand, you do get endless replayability when you have a random map. A static map allows players to get used to the map, though, and it allows the map to kind of develop its own personality, I suppose. I'm going to try and get back to the road. It's back off to our right over there. And so let's go ahead. I hope they add, like, inertia, and, like, I hope they add you picking up speed, like, as you go down hills and things like that, so that you can take a little bit of strain off the dogs. Maybe go a little bit faster when you're going down hills. I don't think you can, like, whip the dogs or anything to make them go faster. I doubt that that's an implemented feature. I know that I've seen that, like, in the Balto movies and stuff, where they used to, like, whip the dogs. I don't even know if they whip the dogs, if they just crack the whip to scare them and let them know that you're on notice. Oh, we got a piggy. Is it charging us right now? Oh, hell. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey. Hey. Oh, no! He's... Did my dog kill the pig? No! Dingle! Look at your health! Half your bar is gone, man. You did kill off a boar, though. That's pretty impressive for one dog. Don't help anybody else. Just leave just leave Dingle to fend off the pig by himself. You guys have no camaraderie whatsoever. You know that? You have no camaraderie. Well, they killed a pig, so that's pretty cool. I doubt that one dog could kill a boar. I know that you hunt boars with dogs, but it seems iffy to me. Let's grab some medical supplies off here, and we'll make him feel a little bit better. So there's a Band-Aid. We walk over to the dog, and what we can do is once we're in front of him like this, we interact with him, and you'll have a number of options that you can just, like, take care of. You could feed the dog cooked meat for some reason. I don't think the dog really cares, actually. It gives him more calories, though, so there you go. You can also give him a bandage, or you can talk to him. Talking to him is kind of cool because you get these little emotes out of him, so if you talk to the dog, that healed him? Why did talking to him heal him? I healed my dog by talking to him? Damn, I got magical powers. Hooray for me. Hooray for me. It took me forever to get my gun equipped. I should have done that earlier, so... Luckily, he was able to look out for himself. But yeah, this is what the gun looks like. You kind of... It doesn't have aim down scope. It still uses hip fire. But you kind of kind of rotate it into place. We got two meat off the corpse, I think. Yeah, there it is right there. And so I can cook it and eat it myself, or I can feed it to the dogs. And I think that given the amount of granola bars and things that I that I have. I thought I was sliding backwards for a second. Anyways, given the amount of granola bars and things that I have, I think I'm going to save the food for the dogs so that we can get their calories taken place or taken care of once we get there. 
I saw a deer back over here, so let's see if we can hunt a deer real fast. Yeah, there he is. You have to lead by a lot in this game because the bullets move in sort of an old school Atari mode. They go really, really slowly, and you can actually watch them fly through the air. And so it's got kind of like an old school vibe when you fire weapons, and I hope that they speed the bullets actually up and make them a little bit quicker because that is one of the few things that I've seen so far that I was kind of like, eh, about. But much beyond that, oh, we spooked it. Damn. So yeah, we ain't go get him right now. I think our best plan is probably just to follow him for a little bit. Wait, did he stop? Hold on. Let me see if I can line him. It looks like he stopped. Let's take the sled dogs back up to the hill. We'll take it up to our house, and then we'll try and get a hunt done right here. And if we can get this deer taken down, this buck, it'll give us two meat. Like, everything that you kill in this game seems to give you two meat. I'll try and... We may need to sneak up on him. Let me see if I can keep the dogs back. They're remarkably well behaved if they're not barking at this thing. I mean, then again, my dogs have never been very well trained because I spoil them. But then again, I don't let them be the alpha either. That's the thing. Well, technically, my girlfriend doesn't let them be the alpha. My girlfriend's tough on dogs. She's one of those hardcore dog trainer people that, like, really likes her dog to just be like, mm, and, like, stand at attention when you come in the room. It's a good thing, though. She makes up for my lack of discipline. Let me see if I can... Got him. So you see what I mean? Like, there's a lot of travel time right now, and so I'm hoping they speed, at least double the speed of the bullet. I think if they double the speed of the bullet, maybe even triple it, it'll probably be a lot better off. So let's go ahead and loot this corpse real quick, and once we get some meat off this thing, we should be able to feed the doggies, which would be pretty cool. So there it is, skinning away. We got ourselves two meat off the corpse. You saw it flash there real fast. We've got four raw meat right now. I can eat some of the things that I have on me. We only have a little bit of water. And so I don't really know how we keep stocked up on water. All things considered, the water supply may become a little bit odd. Because I don't think you can melt snow yet in the game. There's a button inside the furnace in here that is not labeled yet. It says, ignore me. I'm assuming that's probably going to be for melting down water later on in your adventures. That's my assumption anyways. I couldn't say one way or the other until I verify it with the developer himself but now that we've got meat for the dogs I think we can actually stay out and I mean yeah their meters are barely touched on right now I don't know if that blue bar is their energy or like how happy they are or if it's water usage I think we'll find out over time I can I actually water them hold on let's look let's find out I can give them a water but it's his energy okay so technically I bet we can sleep and it will restore their energy but we don't have to that's kind of like a last ditch effort you can throw a water bottle on them and that'll stop him. That's also how you stop a dogfight, in case you didn't know. My actually, my brother-in-law told me that. And he actually, I saw him do it one time, because he has a pit bull. And it got a little scrabbly with another dog at the park. And so, essentially what you do, the dogs didn't, the dogs didn't like each other. It's one of those things where both dogs walk up, sniff each other, and then they both just go like batshit nutty. It's totally unpredictable. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just kind of like, I, some, I think sometimes dogs get a bad vibe from each other. And they're just like, I don't know you. Hey! Dog, I don't know. I'm going to kill you. And they just, like, randomly decide. I've seen even labs do that sometimes where it's just, like, you can't really tell what's going to set them off sometimes. But anyways, when it happened, my brother-in-law tackled the dog and threw a bunch of water on its face to get it to release and worked out pretty well. Worked out pretty well. Worked pretty quickly. The other dog didn't have a scratch on it, by the way. Neither dog did. It was, like, a real quick, just, like, where they, like, went after each other. And then after that, it was perfectly fine. So, not a scratch on them, all things considered. Probably the best result you could have hoped for in that situation. Just follow this road along. That's all that I'm going to do today. Follow this road off and down. I think it's going to fork right here. I want to keep myself oriented, though, because if I, you do have yourself... Hold on. You do start with a compass, I think. Yeah, you start with a compass that you can look at. And so that's going to be... Wait, you can set a waypoint? Hold on. How did I mess that up? Oh, you can set custom waypoints. Okay, so you can actually set that to go back to your house. That's a pretty useful item. I would actually say that what they should do is they should make the compass developer, if you're watching, it's just an idea. You don't have to listen to me. Obviously, it's your creative vision, and I afford you, obviously, that freedom. But just saying, maybe make the compass point north no matter what. And then make an other item called a GPS, and then you can mark waypoints using the GPS, and that would kind of distinguish the two. So you start with an object that's kind of valuable for, you know, basic finding your way around. Or then secondly, you get a better item that allows you to actually mark points on a map. Just an idea that I was thinking about. Or you can make it even more interesting. I've always wished that a game would do this, where you have a map, and you have a compass, and you can mark things. 
like on your map you can actually make like little etch a sketch kind of like a like an ms paint type thing on your map so you can make all your own little markings and be like deer here boars here house here and then using your compass you can kind of navigate around either that or you could make like a you know a line for yourself a line that you could follow back home a waypoint i think i may have already screwed up which way is back to my house i think it's that way I started talking and I forgot what I was doing and anytime I do that I get disoriented. I think we're probably okay. Now that I know that there's other houses out here in the middle of the nowhere like that have extra rest stops, I'm not actually quite so worried about keeping my house in sight. Let me put my gun back on because you never know. That pig ran up on us from super deep out. There we go. So let me grab this. We've got our rifle. There, This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Okay, there's only one like it because I've only ever seen one spawn on the map. But it is still mine. I still rest by the second claim. Stanley Kubrick is one of my favorite directors, by the way, in case you didn't know. its I don't think that's ever actually something that I've ever brought up in an episode. My favorite cinematography people. Oh yeah, Stanley Kubrick, remarkably consistent as a director. Makes some movies that definitely make you feel really, really uncomfortable. I felt that way about A Clockwork Orange, though. Like, A Clockwork, or a Clockwork Orange was difficult to sit through. The whole thing was really difficult to sit through. There was, like, no aspect of that movie that was not, not I'm not going to say unsettling, but it's just like bad things happening to people. Like a bad guy doing bad things to people and then bad people doing bad things to him. And it's just like a big old circle of everyone abusing everyone. It was just like a movie that really kind of make you lose hope in humanity. Like, God, that was terrible. So right here, we're going to have to split back off and take a right. I'm going to try and remember that. I mean, my waypoint should take me back to the road, I think that I want to go to, so that should be fine. I'll probably mark the house the next time we're there, though. Not in the way that the dogs would mark the house, but... You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm actually going to flip the sled around right here so that we can go back home after this because we are running a little bit low on time in this episode. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to set back to the house before the whole thing ends. And what we can do there is I want to see how the save system works because I actually didn't save my game last time. I think it works when you sleep, just like Long Dark. But I did want to test it out and see if I could make it work properly. Come around. They actually have a really, really hard turn radius. It doesn't go so great. And then they back up so slowly that... Oh, actually, that's weird. Ooh, that's odd. It's reversed from how it should be. Okay. They don't back up like a car does. Like, you don't turn to the right to back up to the right. You actually... Alright, that's a little odd. A little odd, but it's okay. I'll adjust. I will make the appropriate adjustments. Okay, so we wanted to loot this stuff over here. God, it flips you around when you get out of there sometimes, so. We've got nothing in that car. We've got, what is this? An axe? Okay, so we've got an axe. That's pretty cool. Nothing in that car either. So actually, technically, you could say that we got skunked over here aside from the axe. What does the axe do? Is it just like a melee weapon, or can I do anything with it yet? Okay. It appears as though, can I chop trees with it or anything? No. Oh yeah, that's fine, whatever. That works out. I mean, I guess it's just like a placeholder for right now, that's all good. Let's go ahead and grab the gun then, because I prefer to have it. I don't know how the bullet swapping works just yet. So... My inclination... Is to say that it might replace your entire magazine if you try to... Reload, so I'm not going to do it till I'm really low. There's not enough threats in this game anyways to where it matters that you keep your chamber all nice and ready to go. Your magazine, it doesn't matter. Like, typically you're only going to come across like one threat at a time. And it should be fairly easy to deal with. Let's follow the trail back home. And I'm pretty pleased with this first episode. I do like this game quite a bit. And so I wanted to shine a little bit of exposure on it. Like I said, we're not going to do like 100 episodes of this. Probably like a 5 episode series. Just to show off what there is to do. And then after that, we'll break it off. And we'll just kind of keep a tentative eye on it into the future. Until it's got enough features to where you can actually hit it full bore. And do like a massive series about it. You know what I mean? So, I will see you all there. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Eternal Winter. I look forward to seeing you in the next couple episodes. As always, I bid you all a fond farewell, and hi-do, everybody.